Okay, assalamu alaikum, Shabab. Welcome back to the class. Um, today, we are going to finish chapter eight, no doubt about that. And we are actually going to have maybe half of the lecture to, you know, give you an overview about chapter nine. So the purpose behind uh, chapter nine is, you know, just, I, it's, it's very important for, for you and for our industry as well. But we don't have time to do it. But what I'm going to show you is that using your knowledge, you will probably be able to handle yourself very well. So it, it's just now the, the logic is, is already structured in your mind about how do we deal with the structures and how to analyze them, you know, analyze their safety. So um, let's not delay this any further. And uh, what I want, I mean, last class, we stopped when we uh, explained how we analyze uh, a shear joint like this. And I just wanted to draw your attention to this example, which is basically showing you here that the, uh, what I want to show you is very important, which we are going to have a soft example about it, is how if we want to analyze the bending of, the, of that blade, which is bolted to the wall, then you will apply a bending load, but you know that the fo you know the force you know the distance to the centroid, so you can find the moment. You know half the distance C. The only remaining part is I. And I kind of gestured to you last time about how do we find I. So for I, if you look here, it says that we need to take the I for the bar, which is the normal one, 1 over 12 BH cube, because it's rectangular. But we need to subtract from that the moment of inertia resulting from the two holes. Do you, do, do you see that? So, so basically, uh, we, this is why we are doing this. Do, do, do you understand it, uh, Shabab? So uh, that's why I want you to focus on this principle, because if we tell you is the member is going to be safe or not, then you should know that when you calculate the um, the the moment of inertia, you should consider the the the, the holes because they will reduce the the, the cross section. So let's let's have very uh, you know that one is an example, a typical example from the book. This is an example from the back of the book. It's just like a, a good example, um, very suitable for, for exams and, uh, and even homework. Okay, yeah, it, 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 is not, um, it is not designed like with two rows of bolts. And this makes it, in that sense, a little bit easier. But, and you can go back to the old, to the previous one or in the back of the book, or hopefully from the homework, you will have the problem when you have multiple bolts and they are, you know, two in the top, two in the bottom, something like this. But here it says that we have a vertical channel. So this is the channel. Uh, which is given to us as dimension like uh, 152 by 76. And maybe you remember this from civil engineering, but we can go uh, to table A7, and when we look to 50, 152, 72, we will be able to know the specification of this. Why? Why? Because as usual, for us, what matters is, for example, what is the thickness of this gray one? And if I know the thickness of the pink one, then can I know this line, the shearing line, is it located at the thread or not? This is our fear. 
So uh, what will happen over here? It says, has a cantilevered beam. That's the cantilever. This one. That's the beam. Bolted to it, as shown. The channel is hot rolled AI, SI, 1006 steel. The bar is a hot rolled AI, uh, SI1015, very interesting. So both have different materials. And the shoulder bolts are M12, that's a M, M metric diameter 12, multiplied by 1.75, that's the pitch. And then we have an ISO class 5.8. For design factor of 2.8, find the safe force. How much is a safe force that can be applied on the cantilever? This is, this is, this is what we want to solve. So what are we going to do? We will just say, OK, we have the, the beam or the channel like this. It has, this is just to indicate that the two uh, ribs, when I call them, and this is the center line. The, uh, the bolts are located around here, okay? And what we know is that the distances are known. This is 50 and 50. We know that this distance is 152. That's from the channel. And what do we know also is that the distance from here to there is 26. I know this is not a drone to scale. I'm very sorry. But what happened is what we know is that we will call this one bolt A. This is bolt B and this one bolt C. You see that? that that's very important. Now, what is interesting is that we said, let me now use the green. We said that there will be an F prime A, F prime B, and F prime C. Isn't that right? That's what we said. We said this F prime C. So F prime A equals to F prime B, which is equal to F prime C, which is equal to the applied force divided by three. This is something we know. Now, when the force is applied there in the right end, we know that it will create a moment. That moment, I am going to just highlight it. So that moment is going to be like this, right? So if the moment is like this, then as I told you before, the moment will be replaced by secondary forces, that sh shear forces. Now, since, you know, from geometry, it is very simple to say that everything here is symmetric, then where is the centroid, Yashabab? I'm gonna put a cross mark here. This is the centroid. Now, that bolt will be lucky because it is on the centroid. Because logically, the moment is now rotating around that point. So that has no shear forces, no secondary shear forces. But C will suffer from a secondary shear F double prime C, and it is downward because this is the sense of the rotation, while A is going to have one, which is upward. So this is F double A. Now it start to get interesting, right? There is one bolt which has the green and the blue going in the same direction. And there is another one where the green and the blue are opposite to each other. So now we, this is now a very, you know, kind of complete free body diagram. What are we going to do is this. We are going to go to the back of the table, you know, the back of the book and say, okay, the bolt, the bolt, if we look for 5.8 SAE grade, then we will find that SP for the bolt is 380 megapascal. 
we will find also that the yield strength of the bull is 420 megapascal. Yeah? Now, that channel, that channel based on table A7, the channel will have a thickness of equal to 6.4 millimeter. And from A20, we know that the channel has a material which is equal to, uh, has a yield strength which is equal to 170 mega Pascal. Okay, now, how about the cantilever, which was made from another material? The cantilever, which is, I'm gonna call it the beam here, has an SY, which is equal to 190 mega Pascal. I am not done yet. I have an M12 bolt. So I can go to, I forgot which table, is it A31 or something? And then I go and find the knot. The knot has a height which is equal to 10.8 millimeter. A lot of going back and forth in the beginning. You have to be ready for that. Now, the next part is to go and find the distance from here all the way to here. Why? This is gonna tell me what is the moment. So if I work out that M, so M will be equal to the distance 50 plus distance 26 plus distance 125, and this is multiplied by F, which is going to be equals to 201 force F. How did I get this, ya shabab? Well, look, this is the 125. This is the 50. What remains is this part. That part is not difficult to find. Why? Because I know that from the channel, I know that this is 152, okay? Then I divide it by two, and I get this distance. Now, this distance is 152 divided by two minus 50, which is going to be uh, uh, 26, okay? So that's how I found the moment. Now, what happened is this. I need to know what is the secondary shear, right? The secondary shear, we said that F double prime, and I am not, you know, F double prime A, which is, by the way, equals to F double prime uh, C. Let me admit to your friend over here, which is the same as F double prime C is going to be equal. Do you remember the equation? It is M multiplied by R. It's supposed to be RA or RC. The R, I am, the subscript of the the R should be the same as the subscript for the force. But since the forces are the same, I don't care. I know that R is one value. Here, this is RC, how the RC. And this one is RA. Both of them are the same. RA equals to RC, which is equals to 50 millimeter. Okay? So I don't need to put a subscript. It's just R divided by. Now, how many bolts do we have? This is tricky because you might think that we have a three, but one of them doesn't carry that secondary shear. So yes, and physically we have three bolts, but how many bolts will contribute to the secondary shear? Huh? Only two, only two. Putting the three here, I wouldn't blame you if you don't know anything, if you just look at the equation and just um, think this is the rule. No, you should include the bolts in action. So we have 50 square plus 50 square. This one is OR on the top is also 50. So it is going to be M multiplied by 50. So what, what are we gonna get? We're gonna get, remember M, is 201F, that's the M. 
And then I multiply this one by 50, and then I have 250 uh, squared. Is that right? So when I do the calculation, I will find that this is equal to 2.01F. Do you see that? Now, it's very interesting. Why? Because we will always try to express, you know, values in terms of F because it is the unknown. F is the unknown. Now, what is the next step? Ya yeah, Shabab, listen to me. In the exam, we might ask you to analyze the bolts. We might ask you to analyze the, 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 the safety. Here, we want to know what is the maximum F that we can apply. Should we analyze that F based on the bolts, which is, you know, the weaker or the stronger? Should be done based on which one, Yashaba? The weaker or the stronger? اليوم بعد ما في كوز يا شباب Well we'll see you in the final okay الوعد في الفاينل يا شباب What are we gonna do? We are gonna analyze it based on the weaker in the weaker one So what are we gonna do? We will see that FC okay FC is the critical one because both of them are in the same direction, going the same direction, and their action will be added together. So what are we going to do? We will say that FC as the critical bolt is equal to F prime plus F double prime C. Now, remember, in here, it is very simple. Why? Because F prime C and F double prime C are going down in the same direction vertically. If there is an angle, you know, if there is an angle, you need to go and find the X, sum the component in X. You need to find the Y's, sum the component on the Y. And then you need to take the X and the Y and then square them under the square root. And then you will find the resultant one. But here, since both of them are vertical, then if you remember, this is... The F, the F prime is 1 over, is F over 3. So it is 1 over 3 plus 2.01 multiplied by F. Yeah. So what is the final force that is going to shear off the bolt at location C? It is 2.343S. Now, I finally found the force. Now, what I need to do? I need to do the following. I will go to the bolt and say, okay, the length of the bolt is supposed to be equal to how much? Look, this is 12. And then we told you that the thickness is how much? It's 6.4, right? And the knot has a height of 10.8. And then I will add two threads which is two multiplied by 1.75 the pit size that's gonna help me find the length of the bolt so let me uh, make this one in a i don't know blue so the length of the bolt i repeat it's a 12 the thickness of the pink uh cantilever plus the thickness of the channel is 6.4 plus the height of the knot is 10.8 plus two threads which is 1.75 the total all of it is equals to 33 millimeter okay now i go to the length of the threaded portion which is 2 d plus 6 milli so this is 2 multiplied by 12, remember this is M12, plus six, and this is going to give me 30 millimeter. Wow, 30 out of, uh, 30 millimeter threaded bar out of how much? Out of 33. So LD is equal to L capital 
minus LT, which is going to be, you know, reasonably, what the uh, uh, three millimeter. It is 33 minus 30, which is equals to three, which is less than the cantilever, less than the thickness of the cantilever lever okay so what will happen is that if this is you know what does this mean this means the cantilever was pink so let me try to just come close to that so this is what happened look the bolt this one is a 12 okay uh, sorry not 20 it's a 12 okay and the Thickness of the channel is 6.4. This is 6.4. So what happened? The bolt came here. This is the head of the bolt. And then only three millimeter. Only three. Three millimeter. And then we start having the thread. Do you understand what I'm talking about? So we concluded that this part is definitely shearing the, the root, okay? So what will happen now is this. So the, the shearing will happen on the thread. If the shearing will happen on the thread, I will go and jump and find AR from table 8-2, okay? And it will find it for M12, 1.75. This will teach me if it is fine threading or not, I will get 76.3 millimeter square. Now, what is the analysis that I am going to do? I will come and say, okay, the shear strength of the bolt, okay, SSY is equal to 0.577 multiplied by it yield stress, okay? And this is going to be 420. If I am not mistaken, yeah, Shabab, let me just check one thing over here. What did it use here? Okay, fair enough. Why am I was looking for something? I was just trying to be consistent. I don't want this solution is done by using the yield stress of the bolt, this Y for the bolt, and then multiplying it by von Mises to convert it into shear. So I was just looking if the book used proof strength in here but i think it is not so what will happen here we will have the shear stress of the bolt as 242.3 mega pascal now the next part is to go and find the shear stress the the force based on the shear stress so if I say that tau allowable equals to F over A, then I would put this as the yield stress, the shear yield, which is equals to 242.3. And I will divide it by what? The shear yield divided by 2.8. That's the factor of safety given to me by the question. And then I will go and put the shear force in there. Now, what is the shear force in there? The shear force is this. Do you understand? So maybe um, I should say here, this is F shear. So what is F shear? It is equal to, 
2.343F the unknown F and then divided by the shear area which is what the root area which is 70 uh 6.3 uh millimeter square so what happened over here if i solve for f i will get f as 2.82 kilo newton do you see that that's the first estimation now the second estimation will come from where bearing on the bolt. The bolt, ya shabab, has a projected area. Area for the bolt is the projected area of the bolt is equal to a width, which is its diameter, by the height. The height, ya shabab, we should use what? We should use the area, okay, that we have two areas, all right? So what do we have? We have one area, which is this one is a 12 millimeter. And then we have another one, which is how much? 6.4 millimeter. Okay. Now, if we look at the bearing stress, sigma bearing is equal to basically that force, force, let me call it bearing, divided by the area. Okay, so what will happen over here? I will look at the channel and then I would look uh, uh, on the, for the bearing on the, uh, on, the, on, the, on, the, on the channel. So I will look at the bearing of the channel uh, on the bolt and then I would look for the bearing on the, on the, on the channel by the bolt. So what will happen over here? I will have the bearing stress as the, what stress, yes, about what should we use? Which stress for the bolt? For bearing. أول حاجة أول حاجة يا شباب. If you look here, what is the force on the bearing resulting from the bearing stress? It is equal to sigma bearing multiplied by a. صح ولا لا؟ قبل كل حاجة. Before anything, إحنا عندنا هذا. If we use the bolt, يا شباب, is like this. This size is the diameter of the bolt. So we don't have a problem. The diameter of the bolt is 12. So should you multiply the height as a 12 or as a 6? Look, look carefully. If you use area as the diameter 12 multiplied by the 12, the 12 is the area of this, the area will be bigger and the force will be bigger. What does it mean? معناها I am telling you go and put a large force you can do that while if I use the area as the diameter 12 this one is the thickness this is the diameter by 6.4 6.4 then I will get a lower force now a lower force means you should not you should not exceed this lower force. So the lower force is more scary. Do you understand? So for that reason, what are we going to do? We will use the area of the bearing as the thickness by the diameter, which is 6.4 multiplied by 12, which is 26.8 millimeter square. Now, what are we going to do? The bearing stress allowable this is going to be equals to again 2.343 f divided by the area of the bearing which is this one the only thing is what is this 
This one is bearing stress coming from, you know, force, like normal. So we should use SY for the bolt divided by the factor of safety, which is 2.8. And from here, we know that this is 420 megapascal. This is 2.8. This is known. So the only unknown is the force. And that's where I am going to get the force equals to 4.92 kilonewton. This is the maximum force I can apply. That's what it's telling me. If I use the bigger area, it will tell me, go oh, use, oh, you, you, you will use bigger. And I, I will be deceived. Do you understand? So what is now the bearing on the channel? Do you understand? The bearing on the channel. What will happen? If I look at this, the channel has a yield stress of 170. So for the channel, I have the bearing stress. So I'm going to use bearing stress. Sigma bearing is equals to 3.2. Uh, Let me make sure you will never make a mistake here. 2.343F divided by the area of the bearing. It's the same area. This is the same area, which is equals to 76.8. This is exactly the same as this one. The force is still unknown. The only thing which we don't know is this. And this one is going to be 170 divided by 2.8. Now look, definitely it will drop the load. The expectation now will be less. Why? Because I used 420 and I get 4.92. If I use 170, what is the F? F here is 1.99 kilonewton. Only. This is now the lowest value. The lowest value. We can't go more than 1.99. So what about the bearing on the cantilever? It will be safe because area for the cantilever, okay, is equals to what? 12 by 12, which is 24. Uh, sorry, not 24. Uh, this is 144 millimeter square. SY, this is for cantilever, okay? SY for the cantilever was 190 megapascal. So again, I will go and say 190 megapascal divided by 2.8 equals to 2.343F divided by 144 millimeter square. If I solve this, I will get F as 4.17 kilonewton. Arfina shab had the cantilever, the lilon ha pink. We اشتغلنا على الوقت. The, the channel, now we are working on the pink, okay? Now, we are not done yet. That is the last thing remaining, which is the cantilever has this, um, what is it? One bolt, two bolt, three bolt, right? And it is subjected to a force. Is that right? So when we want to analyze the bending now of the cantilever, so bending for the cantilever. Okay, so what will happen? M is not difficult. I, uh, and then the only thing, and C is not difficult. The only thing you want to worry about is I. So what is I? I, yeah, Shabab, look, is equal to 1 over 12 multiplied by, if you go back to this, yeah, Shabab, okay, what do you see? You see that I, I mean the beam is like this, of course it is circular, okay, like this, but it has here, a height of 50 millimeter and uh, a thickness of how much? It was 12 millimeter. 
Now, apparently, the bending is going to happen on uh, this plane. So this is the base. And if this is the base, then the height is this much. Is that true? And the base is this much. So this is the B, and this is the height. The height is perpendicular to the base. And for that reason, what will happen? We will have this as the base, which is going to be how much? 12. And then now we need to talk about the height. Okay? So what is the height? The height, if you go and cut this cross-section, okay? Cut this cross-section. Why? Because we will assume that this cross-section, ya shabab, is going to be basically analyzed Destruction. like this. What? Will we subtract them? Yes, what you need to do, you need to go, but just be careful here. Be careful. Is that what you need to do? The proper way is to take 50, which is the height, and then cube it, and then subtract from it what? You subtract what? The 12. The 12th cube. Do, do, do you understand? Because, ya shabab, the rectangular piece alone and the bolt alone, the, the hole for the bolt, both of them, ya shabab, share a common centroid. عشان كذا, انت مفوت تسوي, تقول 1 over 12, the base, the same, 12, multiply by 50 cube minus, 1 over 12 tw multiplied by 12 multiplied by the height of the bolt, which is a 12 cube. Do you see that? That's how we subtract it. So, ma truh tiju with hotli hina cube. No, this is wrong. This is wrong. It is actually like this. So, 1 over 12. Multiplied by 12 is a common factor. That's why we talk it up. And then we end up with 50 minus 12. Each one, 50 cubed minus 12 cubed. If you do this, you will find that I is equal to 1.233 multiplied by 10 to the power. I think it's a minus 5. I made a mistake, an error in the slide. I put it without a minus m squared. So now, what are we going to do? We are going to consider, ya shabab, the distance which is from here all the way to here. Do you see that? Do you see that? Not the distance to here. Why? Because we are considering that this is the part which is cantilever. Okay? So what are we going to do? We want, we know that bending the moment is going to change like this. It will reach maximum at the cantilevered end. But in here, it has a value which is equal to the force by that distance. This distance is 125. And if you remember, this distance is at 26. 26. So the moment at the location of that bolt, Sorry, uh, I should continue here. So the moment, what happened? Did I get connect disconnected, Yeshaba? No, no, I'm good. So the moment in here, M, is equal to 125 plus 26F, which is going to be equal to how much? 151 multiplied by F. So if you know the moment, then basically you would say that Sy divided by N is equal to M divided by I over C. This is just Sy is 190. This one is 2.8. This one is 151 uh, F. And then what do we have? We have the I divided by C. C, yeah, Shabab, is, is 25. C is equal to 25 millimeter, half of the height. 
If you do that, you will find F equals to 2.22 kilonewton. So, which one is the lowest? Which 1. one? 1.99. It is not. It is, yeah, then F should be 1.99 kilonewton. Yeah, Shabab, لا تخلون هذا السهل الممتنع, huh? Because, do you look at the equations? We have been doing this since chapter three. And today we are celebrating the last lecture. But we are using very simple equation F over A, but it needs focus. because they are in rush and hurry. خلاص الان طلعها من البداية to the center. Two z two hundred and one F. You use 201 f, which is wrong. You miss using the root area. You miss you you know calculating the moment in the right way. Otherwise, they are pretty much very simple equations. Now, uh, I hope this is a very good exercise for you. Uh, what are we gonna do? I want to go in a few minutes, yeah, Shabab, and talk about chapter nine just to give you an introduction about it then we'll take the attendance and uh, we will end the lecture of course we will see you on monday uh, monday yeah, Shabab, as i told you by uh, on the blackboard through the announcement uh, so let me show you this is my old slide from other term 181 i guess i didn't renew it but basically chapter nine is all about welding and the uh, the basic idea is this Welding has its own symbol, which we were supposed to teach you what does these symbols mean. But basically, this is it. We have a material. When we have a symbol like this, which means that we put, uh, uh, we apply welding from one side and the other side, or sometimes we do this one triangle, which tells us that the welding is just single-sided, like here. This is one single weld, okay? And of course, there is also a number, which is called the throat. And this one, throat, means that, means something. And it will basically come in the equation. It makes sense. If you, if you, if you put too much weld, is different than if you put little weld. And this throat is a measure of that, of that much, okay? So what happened is this. We, this is only about, you know, the geometry of different welds. What matters to us is this. How can we analyze weld? How? How can we analyze it? And basically, welding, because it is thin, very small, it is always thought to be under shear. Why? If you have a welding, that little tiny material which is melted, it is not going to expand. It is always going to be sheared off. Okay? When you pull it, it will not get longer and fail. It is more likely to be kind of sheared off, cut. And this is the principle why you will see in, in bending, I mean, uh, in, in, in welding, always tau, tau. Because it just gives you the fact that this, this weld is, is being torn apart. Okay? So what will happen? This is the throat size, the one I told you about. We can analyze welding. We can just resolve forces as usual. We will have some shear forces, some normal forces, and then we can put them into some sort of an equivalent measure, okay? So like, like von Mises. What is important is that when we put the welded structure into action, we will realize that, for example, as an example, if we have a blade like this, this is a thick blade, a thick one. Why? Because I can take this plate 
and there is another you know wall or steel or something and then i put the world in here and i put the world in here and the reason is because i am applying a force like that so just like bolted joints just like bolted joint this force through the centroid will be projected into some sort of a moment that moment is shearing off the the the, the world and and the same force if you look at the world here and the world on the bottom this is the world on the top this is the world on the bottom you can feel that this force is also trying to shear the world down so we will have tau prime which is a primary shear the concept is while f can be expected to be i mean v expected to be like f the A is very weird. What is the area for this? And what is the area for this? So the idea is this. We have also a double shear, which is a secondary shear. And again, while the moment can be known, while R is the distance from the centroid to any point in the world, still we have a, a secondary moment of inertia, which we call it J here. What is it? What is it for the world? Interestingly, ya shabab, this J is estimated to be a constant 7.707 multiplied by H, which is the throat, multiplied by some sort of a unit moment of inertia, JU. And interestingly, this JU is tabulated. So, clearly, I think it's a way to go to the JU and go to the JU and go to Ibarra on two lines, I can find Ju. If I find Ju, I multiply it by H, but, and then I multiply it by 0 0.707, and I can find J. If I find J, I can find that tau double prime, which is MR over J. R is the distance from the centroid to the world. And phi R, the furthest the R, the more is this, and I need to be careful which R I pick. But J as a property of the material of the geometry of the world is tabulated. If you put, if you, Yashabab, if you deal, look, this is a simple example. Al world Yashabab Jakida. Okay. So H al Sometimes you have a world which makes it like a rectangle. Sometimes you have a world which makes it uh, like this. It doesn't matter. Everything is in the table. So what is interesting is that after finding tau double prime, after finding tau prime, the area, ya shabab, j, you don't calculate them. You pick them from the table. You need to put some numbers the length of the world, the throat, whatever. But once you find them, they are actually like two different modes. Can one secondary shear, one primary shear, and they have different directions. So you square them under the square root. As you see, this is x, this is y and y. So we put y's together, x together, and then we find tau allowable, tau maximum which is a resultant shear trying to cut the, the world. Then, through an allowable shear, by the way, if you go to the welding society, you give the welding rod, the electrode, it has a property in it. You can get that property and use it, can yield stress to find if it is safe or not. You can do the same with bending. Bending is the same. Is going to cause some sort of a bending, but we say we can no shearing. At the same time, can no we shearing in this side and shearing in this side. So the bending brought us a new unit, which is IU, just like JU. Again, you can go and find IU from the table, and when you find IU, you can go. And if you have a problem like this, you will find yourself, look, here you use I, 
which is calculated from IU. Here you use J, which is calculated from JU. And here you have A, all of them are tabulated. How do I know them? هذا مثلا circular world. خلاص, you go for circular world and you analyze them. What is interesting is that you will find that you have tau double prime like this, tau double prime like this, tau prime. You combine them together under the square root and then you find a maximum shear. And if you can find the allowable shear from the standard, you can just you know, find the factor of safety by dividing the allowable divided the applied, and that's it. I don't think I'm going to take that in this, yeah, Shabab, it's, uh, it's time is over. But I hope you got an idea about chapter nine. Thank you so much. We'll see you on Monday, okay? Get ready for the project.